I want to ask you about Rui Hachimura and the, the performance he put in tonight. How, how big was that for you guys? Uh, it was uh, huge. It's growing up right in front of our eyes. You know, sometimes even I'm, I'm the big culprit of this. Sometimes I want these guys to be 27 right now and four, four seasons of playoff experience. But you get it. You get it by going through it. You get it. You get your first game in the playoffs by going through it. You get your first situation being down 0-2 by going through it. And today we were zero and three going into this. So, but he was, he was a big, big part of us on both ends of the floor. He's a multi uh, defender. He can guard many different types of players. And I thought defensively rebound, we need his rebounds. We can't just rely on our point guard getting rebounds. Uh, but he was good on guarding. He was good on making shots. He had a big three and I had a big defensive possession not too far from one another. And, and you were asked uh, before the game about sending Ben Simmons to the free throw line, and, and it worked for you guys tonight. Uh, what went into that decision? Well, we were, we were trying to actually do it the other, the other night, and we, we, we struggled doing it. It's on me. But we made sure, and then we actually struggled twice tonight, uh, if not three times uh, in the first half as well. Um, I thought we did a good job of boxing out. That's been, you know, that's always an issue with us at the free throw line. But if you're going to miss them, we got, we can't, we can't let them get the rebound. And I thought that was uh, some big, big plays. And uh, and then Russell's foul on them. That's how, that's how you foul. No, no, freaking layups. That's what it's, that's what it's about. And I thought everybody. I mean, this is a big game for us. We didn't want to go go down and only play four games in our first playoff experience for a lot of guys. Fred. Hey, Scott. Um, I know I know a big thing with you guys is trying to make sure Rui comes out with a with a lot of intensity intensity on a on kind of a game lead basis. He seemed to really have that, especially in the second half. When he has it going in terms of his energy like that, what do you find spurs him? Where does that come from? Um, we're, we're all trying to, to figure things out with Rui and with everybody. You know, it's, this has been a season of figuring it out on the fly at times. But, but when Rui gets that, that gear, that's what we need. Um, he's had it. It's been, you know, choppy at times through some of his unfortunate injuries and safety protocol and he seems to ramp up and then something unfortunate takes place but he's in a he's in a good place I thought the last you know last couple of games he's been a, he's been really our our guy that's making threes and like I said he hit the he hit the biggest one uh biggest one of the night of his three yeah and speaking of that he hasn't been taking a ton of shots during this series, but he's made them at a good rate, specifically jump shots. Do you feel like the three-pointer is farther along now than it was even at the beginning of the season? No, absolutely. And the confidence level. It's one thing to shoot them, but you gotta, you know, you gotta see them go through, especially a young player. Um but yeah, Russell can miss 10 in a row and he thinks he's gonna make the next one. Brad can miss the same thing. He thinks he's gonna miss the next one. I mean, make the next one. Um, with Rui, he's really, I mean, he's, has, he's getting confidence in it. I mean, next year it's going to be even more. But it's just, you know, game by game. To him, making shots in the playoffs, that's a huge boost of, of his confidence. And I have it. I think his follow-through has been much better. His release is the angle that the ball goes in the, the basket gives it a better chance. Um, but I think he's, everything's starting to come together. I mean, he's still not you know, behind picks and step backs and all that, but at catch and shoot, I feel very confident he can make those shots. Ava. Uh, Scott, it seemed when uh, you first had to put Robin in early there after uh, Daniel and Alex picked up two fouls that things might have been a little tense, but obviously Robin came in and, and kind of calmed everything down but what was going through your head when your first two guys pick up two quick fouls and, and you got to go to Robin early well I mean I making decisions are always there's always 
um, the ebbs and flows of every decision you make. And the thing that I did not want to happen is start gaff and he gets two quick fouls. And unfortunately that happened. And that's, that's the thing that we've been trying to work with him. He's had, you know, a, a, some opportunities to get away from those and he's just, he, you know, he's, he's learning. And, but that's why we've had, you know, we worked all three all year long and they've all helped in their own way. And Rollo gives us a steady hand. Um, he, he's just consistent with his, with his, I mean, his hook shot is, it's almost, I say it's, it's, it's hook -o -matic. It's always right there and he's making it. I mean, it, he doesn't, I mean, I'm faster than him, but he knows how to use his body and positioning and, and his speed is, is a good speed for us. We were used to that now and, it, and Russell sees it and our guys see it, but I thought his minutes in the first half, he gave, it, gave us a chance to, to win this game. And then Gaff came back in the second half. He kind of relaxed and like a lot of young players do in, in their first start in a playoff uh, game, but. I like the fact that we're all going through these experiences firsthand and every young team, every young player has to go through a playoff first time. And these guys are done with that. Now it's just keep, keep improving. Matt Paris. Hey Scott, obviously you never want to see an injury, but when Embiid goes out, what did you make of the way your guys has kind of capitalized on that? Or, you know, you made a run after he, he went out. No, I mean, we just wanted to play. We wanted to play our way of playing. We're, we feel that we have opportunities. We have opportunities to attack, and this is the way we play. Sometimes I don't – like I tell the guys, sometimes I don't know how we're going to win this game. We haven't shot the ball well, and uh, DB had a, had a good shooting game going, and he got injured. But we got to just do it with just inspiring effort and celebrate each other's great plays and hustle plays. And that's what we did tonight. We got to the free throw line. We, we, we were timely in our fouls. Uh, we're good in our stops. Uh, a couple of things we could have done better on our closeouts on three point shooters, but it was, I mean, we weren't, I wasn't focused on, on their injuries. I, we have, we've had enough things to worry about here. Uh, the last thing I worry about other teams. I just, we just have to play our game. And, um, is Bertans, what can you give, what can you say about Bertans' injury? And is this the same leg that was bothering him early on with the catcher? I, I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, they told me, but I, my mind was racing a, a, a thousand things were going through my mind. I, they told me it was this calf, but I don't know which one as of right now, maybe it is the right one. Yeah. Right calf. Don't know what that all means. Um, hope for the best. I'm assuming. I mean, I'm not, I don't know. Just hope for the best. DA. Scott, what is, what is your level of concern when we continue to see these fan incidents like we had another one here tonight? Well, I think it's, it's, um, it's actually embarrassing for all those fans that do that. There's been... NBA has great fans. I've played in Philadelphia. They have great fans. And they have one knucklehead that decided to throw popcorn. Uh, Boston has great fans. They had one knuckle decided to throw a uh, water bottle. New York has great fans. I played there. I played in Boston, but I got cut after, the first, after they traded me. So they have, New York has great fans. One knucklehead decided to spit on somebody. We have great fans. One knucklehead tried to come into the to the to the arena, and it's um, it's unacceptable. And we have to something something. It's not gonna. It's not good. And we have to banning them and, and this and that. What does that mean? Is there facial recognition that you can't get something a ticket on the secondary market and don't shave for a week and wear a hat and still come in? We got to. I don't know if there's criminal charges, but they gotta they gotta get something on their record, and they gotta get exposed, and they have to and they have to pay money out of their own pocket. You know, athletes in that same same situation. If Russell would have something would have threw somebody a popcorn on somebody, trust me, 
there would have been a major lawsuit that a guy can't see broke his neck because of the popcorn hit him. And we have to, and all these athletes have to defend themselves and spend hundreds of thousands of dollars and get their name tarnished for these fans. I, we love to be heckled. We love it. I mean, I love it as a coach. I love it as a player. I loved it when they heckled me for my two minutes. Russell, he loves to be heckled, but there's, there's crossing the line. All of these, I mean, I didn't have a father, but I, my mom, she would never allow me to even think about doing that. It's a privilege to be in. It's a lot of money that everybody pays. And I know when I go to sporting events with my kids when they were young, I didn't want to hear people use foul language. I didn't want to. It's embarrassing. And we, we have to control that. I mean, we have to control that. But it's unfortunate that one fan here and there, it ruined it for everyone. There's great fans in Boston, in New York, um, in Philly, in, in D.C., uh, in Utah. But there's some that need to just know, you know what? Stay home. Your, your thinking is barbaric. Stay home. We don't need you. We don't need your dollars. Just stay home. Get away from us. Let the fans that enjoy it, let them be with their families enjoying it and cheer us on, heckle us, scream at us, say we stink. And, you know, you're 0 for 6. You're our best player. Keep doing that. Uh, we love that. But, but that, I'm glad our building and our security, that was a great tackle. I don't know if the football club needs it, but that was a great, that was, I mean, I love that. Sometimes I wish we mm -hmm. can, you know, set screens like that, but that's, that's to me, that was first class in our building. I give these guys a lot of credit because they, they protect the fans and they protect our players. And, but I, I love that. I love that part of it, but we got it. These fans, I mean, it's think about it. It's just been happening and they, they have no fear. They have no fear, but they got to start losing some of their money to defend themselves in the courthouse. And then and whatever, I don't know. I don't know the law, but I just know you shouldn't be able to do that and get away with it and just be kicked out because we all know you can, you can dress different and look different and get into an arena. Yeah. That was a long answer, but I'm, I'm tired of it. We, we, all, we all deserve better. And Kyrie's right. You know, these players, these players play so hard. And it's such an emotion. And, and you love it when your players are so competitive and they're on an edge. If your players are on an edge, you have no chance to win. But when you're on an edge and somebody crosses the line, what do you think that's going to happen? I mean, I give all of our players, all of them. There's, only, there's been only 5,000 NBA players in the history of the game. And most of them can control themselves. And I, sometimes I don't know how. They never heckled me, really. I mean, they just said, you know, few minutes here and there because that's all I played but these star players they get a Russell I've been with them for eight years and what he has to listen to night in and night out unacceptable these their parents they need to they need to I mean my mom I know my mom I mean she I would have had the nearest branch ripped off and it would have been on my behind mm -hmm. if I did something that's stupid mm -hmm. Rui, you had been playing pretty well through the postseason so far, but tonight was obviously a, a different level. Uh, what led to that uh, breakout performance for you? You know, um, um, we are down 0-3, and, uh, you know, we actually had nothing to lose. You know, before the game, I talked to Ish. Uh, he told me, you know, we got nothing to lose. We got to just ball out. You know, we just got to be, he said, just be aggressive tonight. Um you know, I was just trying to be aggressive in both ends, and defensively, offensively. And as a team, I think we played together tonight, um, and that's why we got to win. Do you feel like things uh, on the playoff stage are, are are you getting more comfortable? Are things slowing down already now that I guess you've you've played what six games, including the playing tournament? Yeah, especially tonight was really fun. You know, playing in front of these fans. You know, it was crazy. Um, crazy crowd and you know it's, it's good you know it feels good um to be you know for those fans to be back and you know play fun of them and you know um it was a big game too so um yeah Ava really not to ask too obvious a question but how does the game change for you when Joel Embiid leaves oh uh, you know, he, he he brings a lot of attention, you know, uh, offensively. So when we got in, like, went on defense, um, it's actually hard to, you know, 
um, the, those team, that team, you know. But tonight, um, he didn't play almost all game, and we actually, um, you know, defensively, I think we were playing good. Um, we it, it was more easier to guard them. So yeah. Fred. Hey, Rui. Uh, that three that you hit to make it a six-point game with under a minute to go is obviously the biggest three that you've hit, at least with your time with the Wizards. What's going through your mind when you're rising for that and uh, and and after you hit, actually hit it? You know, it was a great pass by um, Brad. You know, he he obviously um, he, he bowled two, three defenders. And then I was in the corner and then wide open and he trusted me, you know, he trusted me and then he passed me. So um, I had to shoot with the confidence. And yeah, that was a big three for sure. Um, especially at these moments, you know, um, yeah. it was, yeah, it was a great two. And you, you're normally a, a pretty calm and reserved guy, even on the court. You got that tech for, for uh, celebrating after the dunk on Tobias. Uh, where'd all that energy come from? Yeah, I got I got first tech, you know. <laughs> um, I thought I would never get tech in my career, <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, it was just just you know um, the fan, fans were back, you know back, and then we all three we had nothing to lose literally, you know. I just want to ball out um, tonight. We played together, and then we are we are as a team we are feeling good. So uh, I just was I was just in the moment, you know. Um, I was just emotional, and, and yeah. That's why I did it. Matt Paris. Yeah. Hey, Rui, you had been working a lot on your three-pointer just throughout the season. You know, Brooks and everyone just said that you needed to shoot more threes. So to seal the game with a three-pointer, how rewarding was that for you, given all the work that you, you had put into that shot specifically? Um, I think because uh, the uh, – uh, Russ and the Brad um, gets a lot of attention, so you know I, you know I get like you know I get wide open threes, so that's why you know they making those you know shots for me, you know. So you know I just gotta be confident shooting. You know, um, Russ always tell me, you know, he doesn't. He say he don't care how many how many I miss. He just gotta shoot with the confidence, and especially these big moments, he he say you know you gotta. You gotta, you gotta be ready. Uh, the day's coming, so you know. I just, I'm, I'm always, you know, I gotta be ready, and yeah, just take it. You know, I always practice, like you said, I've been practicing a lot, and you know, just gotta, yeah. Just do it. Mark. Uh, really, what what has been your matchup with Harris this series? It, it it seems that you guys have gone back and forth and everything. What what has that been like for you? Um. I mean, I was guarding, uh, mostly guarding Ben this game and uh, last game. So, but we're switching a lot. You know, they they obviously they are bigger than us. So, you know, I gotta be a defense guy. You know, I can guard um, those the uh, um, Harris and uh, the Ben. You know, I gotta be a guy to switch on and then defense those guys. But yeah, he's he's a great player. Um, but I watch a lot of film with the coaches and you know. Um, just got to, you know, just got to be better, a little more better for next game. Neil. Hey, Rui, you alluded to it a little bit already. Russ is always having conversations with you on the court. It was seeming like he had a couple conversations with you today. What was he trying to tell you? What was he trying to reinforce to you? It seemed like even one time it put a smile on your face. Oh, it was a... Um, it was a corner three uh, when I after I met it because um, I always like uh, running to like kind of you know I'm I, I was always on the corner so that's why finally I got a corner shot from you know um, from him so that's why he was telling me like you know he's like yeah I told you you know if you if I'm in a corner you know, it's an easy shot and yeah, that's why um, I was making a conversation with him but yeah you know he's a he's a leader you know I was asking him a lot of things uh, through the games and you know. Um, yeah, just being, you know, just communicating. Thanks, Rui. Yeah. Uh, real quick, Chase. Yeah, Rui, I, I think you were on the court when the fan uh, ran on, and obviously it's been an unfortunate trend in the NBA, uh, fan behavior. 
What went through your mind as you saw that, and just what was your reaction to it? I have no, I have no idea. I don't know what he was trying to do. Um, you know, they, they, I think they're just excited. You know, they're just excited to come back and you know, watch you know these games. Um, but you know, they gotta be more respectful to you know to our, like us, like you know, players. It's been kind of off. Um, just you know, they think they can do whatever they want. You know, it's not like they you know they, you know. They gotta have more, a little more respect for us, for sure. Rory was just talking about you, talking to Ish Smith before a game, and he was saying that team has nothing to lose going being down 0-3. How different was like your mentality coming into a game four down 0-3? Uh, first praise my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Um, uh, my mental, uh, it's tough. I've never been in this position before, so it was, it was definitely. Um, Definitely new, uh, and you know the biggest thing is, I mean, Ish was right in that sense. Like the team that's up 3-0, I've been in a position where I was up 3-0 before, and it's it's always tougher to get that fourth one. You know, the pressure is usually on that team to close it out. You know, and you know sometimes you become too pressy, or you know you become you get out of character a little bit, and you know, but it's you just try to do everything you can to win. You know, and, and it makes it tough because you know the other team doesn't want to get swept, so. Um, you know, and they're going to compete and they're going to make it tough on you, which is, you know, we were fortunate to do tonight. So, uh, but I said the last game, man, just embracing, embracing where we are, um, you know, embracing, you know, us being down in a series like we are, but, you know, it's, it's one game at a time, you know, that's, that's all we can control. And that's where our, our focus and mindset needs to be. You know, we're not going to win one game to equals four, uh, you know, so we just got to literally take it a day at a time, a game at a time, you know, let's, we get our rest tonight, tomorrow and be ready to go on Wednesday. Thanks, Fred. Fred. Hey, Brad. Uh, something you guys have talked about all year with Rui is just kind of his energy level being at a consistently high standpoint. And he was clearly at that tonight. What do you find when he really has it going from an attitude and energy perspective? What do you find spurs him? You just, what, do I, what was the last word you said? What do I find? What, like, what do you find spurs him and gives him that energy on nights when he really has it, that aggressiveness? I don't know. You got to ask Rui that. But um, for me, we always just want him to be aggressive and um, accept his challenges on the defensive end. You know, and I think, honestly, I think those probably what, you know, probably projects him and has him. That's when he has a good games. You know, when he's locked in on defense, you know, he's guarding Tobias, making it tough on him. He's guarding Ben, making it tough on him. Uh, you know, and then he rebounded the ball really well tonight too. So I think him just being engaged in all facets of the game just kind of propelled him on the offensive end and boosted his confidence. And, you know, once he seen one go in, you know, he was making them all night. So, uh, you know, we made it our mission and uh, to get downhill and just try to find him. I was able to find him a few times in the second half and he just took full advantage of it, did the rest. Case. Hey, Brad, uh, Rui made a, a big three there with about 45 seconds left. And, and he said that um, the pass to you kind of showed some trust in him. Um, what would I guess was your, have you, has been your mindset when it comes to Rui shooting threes and, and trusting him in moments like that? Uh, I mean, we, we all believe everybody out here can shoot. You know, we don't, you know, we, ne we never tell someone they can't shoot or, you know, they, are, they aren't capable of shooting. Um, you know, we always try to instill that confidence and, and tell Rui to shoot more and uh, be more aggressive, get into the basket. You know, he's one of the most athletic guys on our team. You know, so, you know, put his put his head down, get to the basket, use his body, uh, finish over the rim uh, like he did a few times at night, use his speed, get out in transition. Uh, but ultimately, you know, he's, he shoots the ball well and he shoots it with confidence. You know, he has a great looking shot, he's a good lift on it. Uh, and he's open a lot of the time too. So, I mean, we just, we got to get it to him and we get, we need those shots. Uh, you know, we, we can't afford to pass him up because we probably won't get a better one, you know, uh, against the number one half court defensive team. So uh, it, we just found him. Uh, he was ready. He had his hands ready and his feet were set and he knocked them down. And uh, you guys employed uh, the strategy of putting Ben Simmons on the free throw line. Uh, it was successful for you guys. I noticed late in the fourth quarter, one time he was at the line, you went up to him and, and kind of stopped and, and said something. Uh, what was your message to him? I didn't say anything. I didn't say one word to him. I just stood there and he wants to try to play a little mind game with him. But, uh, you know, he's a tough competitor. He, he we, we, We've been going at it all series. So, 
uh, it was just one of those moments I needed him to give me one or two of these free throws at the end of the game, and we were fortunate he gave us a couple. Ava? Brad, I just wanted to ask you about um, Davis and just seeing him get hot a little bit earlier on. What does that do for you guys as a team? I mean, we we love to see it. You know, we're we're – we're ecstatic for Davis more than anything. You know, we, we just want to be able to see a couple go in and for him to have that happen tonight. You know, that that gets us going, you know, because uh, we need him. Uh, we rely on him uh, to be our sharpshooter. Uh, and he did that tonight, you know. And on top of that, him just being confident, just shoot it, man. Shoot it. Shoot it till your arm fall off. So that's that's been our motto and our, and our kind of how we push Davis. And Davis is he's good. You know, he's, he's going to continue to be who he is and, and, you know, be the player he is and be confident in himself and shoot the ball. So it's happy we were able to get him going tonight. And kind of along that same lines, you guys talked a lot about wanting to get back to having fun and doing the things that got you to this place with the crowd, with the dunks, with everything here. Did it feel like this was a, a fun game? Obviously, it's a win. It's always fun to win. But you know what I mean when I say that? Yeah, I mean, we we definitely we play with more spunk. We play with some, you know, it's a little bit more attitude and it's some excitement. You know, it just felt like we enjoyed being out there on the floor. We enjoyed playing defense. We enjoyed getting out and running in transition. You know, th these are what, you know, make us really good. And this is what gave us success at the end of the year. So uh, we just got back to playing, you know, Wizards basketball the way we know how. And uh, granted, you know, we, we had our work cut out. You know, we understand that Joe was out and, you know, we aren't, we're uncertain of how it is moving forward. But we took advantage of, of what was on the floor and, and we executed. Matt Paris. Hey, Brad, I wanted just to get your thoughts on the fan rushing the court. I mean, I know we talked about it in Philly, but does it seem like fans have kind of taken this, like, you know, they see the incidents in Boston, in New York, and Philly, like, are the wrong people being encouraged by this in a sense, you think? I don't know. I mean, I mean, the stuff that's been happening over the last week has been, I mean, we all know that uh, fans shouldn't be doing that stuff. And obviously with today, I mean, that's, that has no place in the game. Hell, that stopped our transition fast break. So that kind of pissed me off too. But we, uh, I mean, there's no place in the game for it. I mean, either you sit there and enjoy the game or just sit at home and watch it on TV. So, um, you know, we're, we're fortunate nobody got hurt. And, you know, the security did his job. He did a hell of a job getting him, getting him down, getting him out of there. So, you know, we don't need, we don't need that. We don't need that on, on a, in our atmosphere. You know, let's, let's just play, let's play the, play the game we've been out here to play and enjoy it and everybody can go home safe. Last question to DA. Uh, the sort of follow up on that, Brad. Do you feel any less safe on the floor than, than you have before? in the wake of all this stuff happening or no? No, nah, I, don't, I don't feel that safe. I mean, because I know no fan would try me individually. I mean, you can throw anything at me, but you're not going to approach me and try nothing. I know that. Mm -hmm. So, no, I feel good. I, I, don't, I don't think there's a, a safety. I think, yeah, we should be protected as players because we're not able to retaliate and respond in ways in which normal human beings would do. Uh, you know, but we have a job and career, make a lot of money that, you know, we have to protect. So, uh, but I, I would like to see the league and, you know, some of these arenas definitely have a little bit more of a, I guess, safer and protect the players type environment, but uh, I wouldn't say less safe. No, I think I'm, okay. I don't want to use my hood slurring, but these hands work. Rob, I know it was a kind of weird game with, MB going out, but how did you think you and, and Gaff were able to kind of um, keep the paint tight tonight and, and, and make things a little tougher for them going to the front of the rim? I thought he was great. He, Gaff was a huge deterrent at the rim offense, obviously. He was a huge deterrent at the rim. Um, he, he made his presence felt on the boards. Um, he was moving his feet. I thought he, he was so good for us tonight. And yourself? Well, you know, things happen sometimes. Gotcha. <laughs> Ava, Robin, when you're checking in after the um, two other start, the two other centers in the rotation get two quick fouls, 
does that alter your mindset in terms of like, I need to calm things down a little bit, or I need to be careful with that, the way they're calling the game? What was, uh, what were you thinking going in there? Obviously, uh, you know, that's going to be in the back of my mind, but I think something that we talked about, um, while we know he likes to, he likes to score from the free throw line. He likes to get, uh, get some points from there. We have to, we have to be aggressive too. Um, so it, you have to walk that line between being conscientious of not fouling too much, but not letting that take away from your grit. Fred. Hey, Robin. Uh, obviously not the first time that uh, there's been a fan incident in the last even week. Uh, I was just curious what your reaction was to seeing the guy run onto the floor tonight. Yeah, it certainly seems as if uh, you, you can tell those people have been in some kind of captivity for the past year, year and change, right? Um, I'm not. <laughs> I think I heard Brad say it earlier. If, if this was, if people were, if people were on the street, I think they'd be a lot more cautious walking around NBA players. But it's kind of, it's kind of wild to see the, the liberties that people are taking in the stands. Um, and on a basketball note, uh, Rui had a really big game for you guys tonight. Um, when Rui has these really aggressive moments, where, where does that come from? Where do you see him generate that from? Um, I, think, I think it's, to, to me, it's tied to his defensive game. I think when he has really good defensive games, it translates to the other side of the floor. Um, he's, al he's always, he's always going to be offensively gifted. He's always going to be good off um, – have that potential to be offensively gifted. But when he locks in defensively, I think it it takes him to another level where he's just all over the floor in all facets of the game. Neil. Hey, Robin. Um, you probably know a little bit better than I do. I know early in the season, every time you wore a you know Japanese uh, shirt to the game, you guys were doing really well. I think you guys might be undefeated. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Do you ever think and say, oh, it's a must-win game, you know, this is what I'm going to pull out of my wardrobe tonight? Uh, no, there, I wasn't thinking anything like that. I think it may have just been, who knows, maybe it was fate. Maybe it was kismet. Fair enough. Thanks. I'm sure this is a follow-up to that, Zach. Certainly a follow-up to that. But um, what does it say about the mental strength of that Kagawa-san jersey that you guys are indeed undefeated with that jersey on? I mean, even when I'm not thinking about it, I guess it's putting some kind of energy out there that's, it's, it's doing something to the team. It's proving its loyalty to the squad. And I, I gotta, I definitely need to speak up and vouch for it a little more often. I think give it a little, little bit of its share of attention. Does wearing that uniform into the arena also help your hook shots? Who knows? I'd, like, I'd love to see the studies on that. We'll get into that studies. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. How much did the little things tonight, things like Rui making threes and Davis hitting his threes and, and you dunking Rui dunking, all the things like that kind of pitch in to create the, I guess, physicality, aggressiveness, whatever that you guys want to call it? Um, it was big, you know. Uh, we know we have a win to go home. We've got to scrap, find ways to be able to get a win, especially in our home floor. Uh, we got stops. Uh, that's, that was a big turning point tonight, getting stops. Um, I don't know what they shot from the field, but uh, we got stops when we needed to kind of let up a little bit, but uh, we got stops for the most part of the game and, and it gave us an opportunity to be able to get out in transition. Chase. What did you think about uh, Rui's performance? Uh, it seemed like it was it was a bit of a breakout game for him. Uh, I thought he did a good job of just being confident. When he plays with confidence, run the floor. Um, it's my job to make sure I, I find him, make it easy for him because he's uh, real good. Uh, when he's, he's active, our team is better. I've said it all year long. When he plays well, uh, you know, we play well. And, uh, yeah, he did a good job of, of that tonight. And um, unfortunately, there, there was yet another incident involving a fan, um, this time obviously running onto the floor. What was your reaction to that happening? Uh, I didn't even see it. I was in the back. But when I was walking out, I didn't know what happened. Um, but, you know, as fans, uh, my advice is just watch the game, enjoy it. Uh, obviously, 
COVID, nobody's kind of been at games or been at arenas, but we got to make sure we uh, be mindful um, of this is this is our job. You know, this is not a a game or some shit. You can just kind of just do whatever you want to do and run around and come do whatever. Uh, this is our job. Like we take our job very seriously. Um, it may look fun, entertaining, um, but it is our job, and we take it very seriously. So, I think as fans, just my advice is just to be watch the game, enjoy it, and sit back, whatever, um, and that's it. Mark. Russ, the, the, the Sixers made a big comeback uh, in the fourth quarter. What what was it that you guys were able to do to then take command of the game after that? Um, just got shots when we needed to. They made some big shots. Uh, re rebounded the ball uh, well. Um, got some stops on, on demand when we needed to. So uh, that was big for us. Thanks. Christos. Hey, Russ, how could you describe the effort and the resiliency that you've shown tonight, and especially in the second half of that game? Say it again. How could you describe the effort, the whole effort, and the resiliency that you showed tonight, especially in the second half? Uh, it was good from the start. Um, you know, we did a good job of just uh, sticking to our game plan and making sure that we consistent in what we're doing uh, as a team and as a unit, and uh, it showed tonight. And from your perspective, is it this win able to change the whole series against the Sixers? Um, right now, it's one at a time. Um, you know, we it's all we can do. We know it's when to go home for us from now on, and we just got to take one game at a time. And you can't win four games or three games in one night. Just win one, and then after that, you figure it out. Neil. Yeah. Hey, Russ. How did the ankle feel coming out of this game, and did you feel like you maybe had more mobility compared to last game? No, not more. Just, you know, it's what's going to be at this point. Um, just try to do what I can um, to be effective uh, while I'm on the floor, uh, whatever that may be, passing, rebounding, whatever, scoring, defending, try to do what I can to be able to help my team win. Would you say it's like a pain tolerance that is the biggest thing you're trying to balance or – what is the hardest part trying to play through it? I mean, it's a lot. I'm not going to sit here and try to explain it right now, but it's just a lot of different things you have to deal with. The way I play um, and move and jump and stuff like that, it's, um, 